Hello, today's Sunday School lesson is called um, Reconciled to God. The devotional reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 47. The background scripture and the printed passage are both Romans 5, verses 1 through 11. And I'm reading out of the NIV, and it reads as follows. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 reads, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person through, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So as we go back to the first verse to break it down, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God and through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here is the statement, in fact, again, that we have been justified through faith. Faith. We did not do anything except receive in this statement. Faith was offered and justification was offered. This allows us to have peace with God, which means that we're not at peace. We were not at peace with God, and if that is so, then we were to be the deserved, deserving recipients of God's wrath. You saw it on display when Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden. When we speak about the wrath of God, remember that it is the wrath of God. So everything we know about God, He is just. He is love. He is good. He is righteous. All that has to be poured into our understanding of His wrath, even. He is still that with his wrath. God's wrath is provoked by man. And it is not like anger wrath that man has. God's wrath is provoked by our disobedience, our sins. And it is not like anger and wrath that we are used to. God's wrath is different. His holy response to the intrusion of evil into his world. If there was no sin in the world, there would be no wrath in God. God's anger is he settled to resolve that evil will not stand. Evil can't be. If you wonder how God reveals his wrath, and he's been revealing some, then look at this. Romans 1, 24 through 28. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed sinful and shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not be done. When you are justified in faith, you won't want to be away from the Lord. And you will trust Yahweh instead of Yahweh. If you notice, 
it says God gave them over. And what he gave them over was to their own ways. That's what you wanted. This is what you desired. See, our, our faith leads us to follow the Lord's ways and to escape the wrath. In wrath, we have no relationship. But in justification, we receive a relationship. If you don't accept, expect Jesus, if you don't accept Jesus, and the work at the cross, then you are subject to the wrath. Because we believe that what Jesus did at the cross allows us to receive God's righteousness, and we know it. We are now not found to be enemies of the Lord, and eternal damnation has been replaced with eternal life. That brings about our true peace, and that is peace with the Lord. You can't have any other peace if you don't have that with the Lord. This is one of the blessings through Jesus. So in verse 2 it says, Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Here he comes, something else that we receive, this grace by faith. Understand that we received a benefit of a full pardon from the Lord. We get grace through Jesus Christ and pay attention to the through part. Because it is because of him and in spite of us. This is how we receive our salvation. If you look at Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through 14 it says, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are very that are his very own eager to do what is good see we we have to understand this grace puts us in front of the lord as acceptable and willing we are acceptable to his ways because we say no to the world and we are willing to do to wait for the return of the messiah and then make sure that you don't forget that we are redeemed because of the sacrifice. The passage also states that this is for everybody that will live because it says we now stand and we boast. And that is what they did back then. That is what we should do right now. And it is afforded to the generations to come. This sacrifice was and is for the world in all aspects of time. Or in other words, God's grace is always present. Also pay attention to the access of these benefits because they are offered. But you must sign up by faith. Justified by faith and receive grace by faith. So in verse 3 it says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Verse 4 says perseverance, character, and character, hope. So the, the boast that was spoken in verse 4 was to rejoice and all of that was the good. But the rejoicing doesn't die down in the bad. It, it doesn't die down in the bad. We glory in God in all things. And Paul says that our suffering for Christ matters. There's a purpose. When we suffer, we already know that we are destined for something higher. And it speaks to it being a momentarily, a moment of suffering. But look at the great good that it produces in us. It has a branch that we all have to have in us to grow with. And every disciple must grow this in them. You must realize being in Christ does not end our personal temporary suffering on earth. The fact that Paul states that it produces endurance and this endurance brings about strength in the walk with Christ and abilities to have peace and increases the faith. We don't stop when things get rough. We get up, dust ourselves off and keep moving. 
This suffering is for our personal testimony of what the Lord has done for us, and we should grow in happiness to be counted like Jesus in our sufferings. The action against you grow into strengths for you. You walk better and stronger in your faith, and you delight in going against the world and going to God. These are your stepping stones of disciple maturity. There is a direction to how they grow, and they go just in the order as the word says. If you look at James 1, 2 through 4, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. It is an honor to suffer for the Lord. I am not saying that you should be happy or enthused about suffering, but it provides an opportunity to grow into the people that God is calling it to be. If you suffer for a spouse, your child, your parents, or a pet, then why wouldn't suffering for the Lord be something to rejoice about? Think about it. Understand that our suffering is God calling us closer and will you go closer and endure, persevere, build up character in your walk and know the hope of things to come? Or will this be a time that you fall because you won't go closer? Do you, do you remember these lyrics? This is from a song I always heard when I was younger. Never said there wouldn't be trials. Never said I wouldn't fall. Never said that everything would go the way I wanted to go. But when my back is against the wall and I feel all hope is gone, I just lift my head up to the sky and say, help me to be strong. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. And I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. That is suffering. And what did the song say? To lift your head up to the sky because he is our deliverer in all circumstances. You grow a deeper trust in the Lord, that endurance. Then you build character to do what God says consistently. And then hope where we grow because we know where we will reside when all of this is over. So in verse 5 it says, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Our hope will show that what we have gone through leads to what we have believed. And it will not put us to shame. We are receiving the goodness of God right now because his love has been poured out over us and into us through the Holy Spirit who is our guarantee. We will not be disappointed in God's word and in our suffering so there is no shame. God has and will always keep his promise to us. We are confident that we will be in glory with the Lord, and that is because of the love that has been poured out to us. And Paul is confident in this as you should be. You nor I were worthy or earned salvation because we were too busy being sick and sin, and the Lord delivered us. And so in verse 6, guess what he says? You see, at just the right time when you were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, now Paul starts to put down the evidence that was spoken of God's great love for us. The first piece of evidence is that when we were powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And it does not say the godly because Paul will address even the fact that Jesus died for the ungodly. God gave us this sacrifice. Even when we didn't believe, had no faith, we were idol worshipers and followed and went with anything and everything else. So verse 7 says, Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. Paul starts off saying that who would suffer pain and death for a righteous person? And they may be easier, or even a good person who has some kindness with them. And understand that that would probably not happen. We would be hesitant, excuse me, to die for one of these types of people. But would you do it for one that 
does not believe in you, that continues to be disobedient, that goes against you at every turn and take what you have given them and go against you. Give more thanks to what was given instead of to the giver. Could you imagine dying for a killer, a child molester, or a rapist, or for you and I? But look what he says in verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Well, Paul said that God's love is different. You may love your parents, spouse, boyfriend, kids, and whatever else, but there is no comparison to God's love because all of those and all of these loves are limited to a response of being loved back. And look at the Lord. Even if you don't accept him, the love for us was still a sacrifice. God gives you the death of the son and Jesus is his only son. His, his perfect son was never disobedient, faithful always, and died for all of those that would not. God took a righteous man and placed him in our spot, and the righteous man received the wrath that we deserved. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Here's some more proof. That blood was shed on the cross justified us. There is no other way for justification in the blood and the work of the blood is what we believe in. We can't have a relationship with the Lord without the blood. So Paul says, if you know this to be true, then if you thought his death brought about something and that is being saved from God's wrath, you are justified in faith from the work of Christ. So if you believe then you shall not suffer God's wrath. Salvation is the answer to God's wrath. We truly needed saving from the Lord's wrath. Satan is here, but he does not judge, and sinning is bad, but God's righteous wrath is what we are trying to escape, and the Lord offers you an out. See, we truly are not destined for wrath and eternal punishment, but for our salvation because Christ has died for his people and because Christ died and rose again, we live with him. You got to be conscious of this blessing that he gave us. Whether we walk the earth or if we are dead, it's still a blessing from the grave even. You look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 through 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 4 through 9 read as follows. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day... Let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. God had no plans for us to suffer wrath. We just want it. So in verse 10 it says, For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Look at how good God was to us and is to us when we were enemies. Think about it. You were an enemy of God's and he provided reconciliation even when we were going against him. And we have a ministry. We even have a ministry of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18 says, All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That's 2 Corinthians 5 and 18. God did all of this in an enemy. And now you have a relationship, a right relationship with the Lord. So how much more will the death of Christ now bring about a life that puts us into a relationship with the Lord? How much more will the Lord do for us when we are with him and not against him? 
We have now become his beloved children and co-heirs to the kingdom. This verse is about the personal relationship that has been afforded to all of us through the death when we were God's enemies. And if you accept, I'm just speechless because eternity with the Lord is the reward. Verse 11 says, not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This tells you the verdict. Everything that Paul said was true. And now the message is summed up. Our dispute with the Lord has been resolved, and that is for the ones that have accepted Christ. God is the one who had the dispute with us because of our sin, and rightfully so. The death and resurrection of Jesus has pleased the court and made us in right standing with the Lord, but we must have faith. The faith and having saving faith has reconciled us to the Lord. Amen.